Hello, my name is Diego, and today with my partner, Eva, we're going to be going over a concise review of the regenerative properties of mesenchymal stem cells and its potential for treating cases of COVID-19. And uh, yeah, here's just a quick outline of what we're going to be talking about. We got mesenchymal stem cell background, um, several mechanisms of mesenchymal stem cells, uh, COVID-19 background, some information on the structure and pathogenesis of the virus itself, cytokine storms, current treatments, and mesenchymal stem cell-based therapies for treatment of COVID-19. Um, so firstly, let's just go over a quick little introduction to mesenchymal stem cells. They are, they are pluripotent adult stem cells, um, able to differentiate into many different types of cells. They are self-renewing, and they possess um, unique mechanisms that allow them to be great candidates for regenerative medicine. Um, yeah, um, like I said, they can differentiate into many different cells. For example, we have osteocytes or bone cells, chondrocytes, otherwise known as cartilage cells, adipocytes or fat cells, and it, it goes on. Um, these mesenchymal stem cells have homing mechanisms, which means that these stem cells are able to migrate towards um, injury sites in the human body that are difficult to reach sometimes. And uh, they also possess a mechanism called immunomodulation, which basically is um, that they have uh, paracrine factors or growth factors that they release once they get to the injury site um, that will inhibit in any immune response, um, which is very important when transplanting cells into uh, a patient from, say, a donor who doesn't have the same um, genome as a person or, you know, they're not compatible. Um, that immunogenicity is very important for um, transplanting cells. And um, these factors make mesenchymal stem cells viable candidates for treatment of many different types of diseases, but most importantly, we're going to be going over how they can treat the novel coronavirus. Um, but first, let's talk about how these cells are even extracted from the human body. So um, firstly, here's an example of how they're extracted from adipose tissue. Um, this is uh, taken from a donor, and the tissue is then minced up into small pieces, and it could go into either uh, two different methods for uh, extracting these cells. You can just go straight to the explant culture method, which means that these cells are going to be left in the tissue in a culture with growth media, and they're going to be left there for several days. And then the mesenchymal stem cells will grow out from the tissue pieces onto the media. And then from there, scientists can use flow cytometry to differentiate which cells are which and uh, you know extract them from there. And then we have the enzymatic digestion method where the small bits of adipose tissue are incubated with enzyme solution, which is gonna break down the extracellular matrix um, of the tissue. And then this solution is gonna be um, used in a centrifuge. And all of the mesenchymal stem cells are gonna be then in this supernatant. And from there, scientists will take the supernatant put it onto a growth uh, culture with growth media and separate the cells using flow cytometry. And um, there are several ways to engraft these cells into humans. Um, there's the systemic delivery, local delivery, and not pictured in this figure is through scaffold construct. So in systemic delivery, the stem cells can either be inserted intravenously, intra-arterially, or through inhalation uh, via the lungs. Um, in local delivery, these cells are going to be administered through topical compounds, um, injected, or not injected, um, over the skin, or injected into the subcutaneous skin layer. And uh, an important factor for mesenchymal stem cells is their ability to differentiate into many different types of cells. Right here, we have a figure that demonstrates the different types of growth factors needed for mesenchymal stem cells to differentiate 
into, say, an adipocyte, a chondrocyte, or an osteoblasts. And uh, as you can see, there are varying different types of growth factors and also not just which growth factors are used, um, their concentrations are also important for how the cell will choose to differentiate. Um, and mesenchymal stem cells have the ability to differentiate into all three germ layer types of cells. We have the mesodermal types of cells in, over here, the endodermal types of cells, hepatocytes and pancreatic islets, as well as ectodermal cells, um, for example, the neuron. And um, the first unique mechanism for mesenchymal stem cells is their homing mechanism. So to sum it up in a few words, the homing mechanism is just a way for the cells to use chemotaxis um, to find the injury site and then secrete factors into, you know, the microenvironment, which recruits even more mesenchymal stem cells to the injury site. And this is very important for uh, treatments of diseases because, you know, sometimes it's gonna be hard to reach the site of injury, but with mesenchymal stem cells, they will find their way and they will recruit even more stem cells to find their way even quicker. Uh, the second mechanism is immunomodulation, and this is how mesenchymal stem cells will secrete factors, paracrine factors, that will inhibit immune cells. Uh, for example, B cells, T cells, dendritic cells, and natural killer cells. Um, they will downregulate or inhibit these types of cells through uh, growth factors, um, but they will actually upregulate T regulatory cells, which then in turn downregulate T cells. So in all, mesenchymal stem cells will act to decrease the immune response um, in the uh, microenvironment of the injury site. And how it does this is through paracrine signaling, and this is just a quick little uh, overview of how it works. So the cell will package the growth factors in vesicles, and then these ves vesicles will migrate towards the cell membrane where they will undergo exocytosis and release the um, signals into the microenvironment, which they are then uptaked, uptaked, which they are then received by other mesenchymal stem cells through receptors on their uh, cell surface. And then they will also undergo a sort of transduction mechanism to create more of these growth factors, which then they will then use or undergo exocytosis to release more factors into the area, which is important for recruiting more stem cells to the injury site. And um, the last mechanism of, of uh, mesenchymal stem cells is that they can increase the proliferation of more stem cells as well as undergo, not undergo, um, release factors that promote neoangiogenesis. And neoangiogenesis is just um, how these cells can help facilitate the creation of new blood cells from already existing blood cells. And this is important for increasing the vascul vascularization um, at the injury site, which means that more blood is gonna be flowing to that injury site, which means that more mesenchymal stem cells are able to find their way to the injury site and in turn um, undergo their regenerative functions to, to um, perform their function to, to serve in regenerative medicine, which is important for the treatment of coronavirus. As discussed, given the many benefits such as self-renewal, varied potency, and the ability to differentiate into multiple lineages, MSC-based therapies have been studied extensively for multiple diseases. MSCs are safe and effective and have been shown to treat graft versus host and systemic lupus disease. 
which are both immune disorders. Currently, the COVID-19 pandemic is a global threat and MSC therapies have been tested to treat the effects of a novel coronavirus disease. COVID-19 was considered a global pandemic by the WHO on March 11, 2020. Currently, there are 13.9 million total reported cases in the United States and 184,000 total deaths. Worldwide, there are 64.3 million cases and 1.49 million deaths. Cases continue to rise as well as the death toll due to lack of containment of the virus. Coronavirus disease is caused by the infection of the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2 or SARS-CoV-2. Previously identified coronaviruses include SARS-CoV-1 and MERS-CoV, which both caused outbreaks in Guadang, China, and Saudi Arabia. SARS-CoV-2 and SARS-CoV-1 are 79.5% related and also have the same receptor angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ACE2 to infect humans. SARS-CoV-2 and bat coronaviruses are 96.2% identical and that is why it is believed that bats are the natural host of coronaviruses. People may be asymptomatic or they possess symptoms such as fever, cough, shortness of breath, and fatigue. SARS-CoV-2 is an enveloped, non-segment, positive sense RNA virus. It has a diameter of 65 to 125 nanometers. It is composed of various proteins, which include the spike protein, and is a glycoprotein that is composed of two subunits and attaches to the ACE2 receptor of the host cell. Nucleocapsid proteins and small envelope proteins interfere with immune responses. The matrix proteins are transmembrane proteins that deliver nutrients and are used in the viral assembly, which happens at the cellular membrane of the host cell. Other unknown molecules serve as cofactors. The infection of the virus is occurring in the lung environment, specifically the alveoli, which are tiny air sacs in the lungs. The alveoli are composed of various cells, such as type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes and macrophages. Specifically, the type 2 pneumocytes are being infected, and this starts off with the pathogenesis of SARS-CoV-2 by the recognition and binding of the spike protein of the virus to the ACE2 receptor of the host cell. The virus then fuses to the cellular membrane of the host cell and enters the host cell. There, it releases its, its RNA genome to the host cell and hijacks the ribosomal machinery of the host cell where it transcribes and translates a viral polymerase protein that then translates various proteins that make up the virus, such as M proteins, spike proteins, nucleocapsid proteins, which are all assembled into a new mature virion. This mature virion is then released in outside of the host cell back into the alveoli through exocytosis. Once there is a buildup and accumulation of SARS-CoV-2 in the alveoli, this can cause extensive damage to the host cells. These cells respond by sending a cascade of signals to cytokines, which are supposed to aid in mediating and regulating immunity and inflammation. But a release and overstimulation of these signals can cause cytokine storms in the most severe cases. An influx of cytokines, such as those 6 can have detrimental effects, such as the membrane between the alveoli and the blood vessel to become more permeable. This causes plasma from the blood vessel to enter into the alveoli and accumulate. This causes the gas exchange between both barriers to weaken. Also, septic syndrome can occur when cytokine storms happen in other parts of the body, and this can ultimately lead to multi-organ failure and death. 
Currently, there is no cure for COVID-19, although there is an antiviral drug that is injected into the vein, which blocks the virus from reproducing. This is used to treat patients in hospitalization. It has been a race to save the lives of many people infected by COVID-19, especially the most critical patients. Many scientists have looked to MSC therapies to treat COVID-19. MSCs are said to be able to engraft to damage tissue and promote tissue regeneration. MSCs can also reduce the effects of cytokine storms. In a study, researchers utilized bone marrow MSC infusion in patients who tested positive for COVID-19. First major improvement was the decrease in level of C-reactive proteins which is an inflammatory protein present in the response to cytokines. Dendritic cell count also increased, which activates lymphocytes. Pro-inflammatory cytokine TNF-alpha levels were reduced, and the anti-inflammatory IL-10 cytokine levels increased. RNA sequencing also showed that MSCs were not infected by the virus itself. Another study which used umbilical cord MSCs also proved effective. The patients administered the human umbilical cord MSCs had a 0% mortality rate, whereas the placebo control group had a 10.34% mortality rate. There was a decrease in C-reactive proteins and the oxygenation index reduced to normal levels faster than the control group. Also, the lympho count, lymphocyte count also returns to normal relatively faster than the control group. Overall, MSC treatments have proven effective in various studies. Although we do need a larger group of people to truly see the risks associated with MSC treatment. Although COVID-19 is a very new virus, there is a dire need for speedy action on treatment to decrease the death toll of critical patients. Challenges include meeting the minimum standards of quality control across labs, high costs of treatment and manufacturing MSCs to the public. Advancement in technologies will lead to MSCs being a popular mode of treatment in the future. Currently, there are only 10 approved MSC products, but MSC have market potential for regenerative medicine to be approximately $170 billion by 2020. There is a low risk of tumor development, and there are no ethical issues with MSCs, making MSCs-based treatments very promising in the near future.